So today we are beginning chapter nine, which is all about something called transformations. A transformation is really any change you make to the graph of a shape. So it can change its location or position. It can change its shape or its size. So some examples of transformations. Here we have a transformation that increases the size of a triangle. Triangle LKP is enlarged to create L prime, K prime, P prime triangle. Here we have a quadrilateral that was just moved. Its position changed. It moved from here to here, the new version. Well, uh, you'll notice on today's lesson, we'll talk about this more later, but they'll always mark the new version of a shape where it ends up after any move or change with these little almost apostrophe symbols after the letters naming the vertices. Those are called prime. Now, the whole chapter is about different types of transformations and each lesson focuses on one particular type of transformation. The first half of the chapter focuses on types of transformations that preserve the shape and size of the figure. They might change the location, but the shape is congruent to the original shape. The official name for those types of transformations are isometries, and sometimes called rigid motions because the shape remains rigid in terms of its form. So some examples of isometries would be here where this triangle its location changed here. It's in a different place and it flipped backwards. But it's congruent to the original triangle. So that'd be one type of an isometry. Flipping it different directions, shifting it different directions. We call the original shape the pre-image. And the shape that results after any sort of move or change to the figure, the image. So some examples. Here we have a pre-image, the blue triangle. After the triangle is reflected or flipped over this dotted line, we have the image, the result. It's congruent to the first, it's just facing a different direction and at a different location. Or here we have a pre-image and an image after an enlargement. Triangle, all the sides were doubled to create an image of that triangle that was larger. So this one here, this would be an isometry, congruent triangles. This would not be an isometry, even though it's still a type of transformation because the size of your figures are different. So put your pencil down for a second because this is not on your paper. But in your head, see if you could find the two that are actually isometries out of these four options. You have 10 seconds. If you said A and C, good job, because there the image was congruent to the pre-image. It's just at a different location or flipped backwards. But here, the pre-image and the image are different sizes. So those would not be isometries. So one question you'll get on the homework is figuring out what the image of a particular part of a picture is. Or in other words, what is the result after any movement in the picture? So what are the images of angle A and angle B? Well, that would be A prime. We read that apostrophe-like symbol as prime. A prime and B prime. That's the moved versions on the image, on the result. And then what are the pairs of corresponding sides? Well, AB corresponds with A prime, B prime, and so on. So don't overthink it. Some of these questions are really that straightforward. What is the result after any change to the graph for each piece of the picture? A becomes A prime. A, B becomes A prime, B prime. Now, the second half of today's lesson isn't about transformations or even isometries in general. It's zooming on, on a particular type of isometry or rigid motion that just slides figures in one direction or another. So the technical definition of translation, and make sure you write these definitions down, is that it is a transformation that maps or moves all points of a figure the same distance and same direction. So in this image here, this image resulted from taking the original triangle and sliding each point 
six units to the right. By sliding each corner six units to the right, we created a new triangle that was congruent to the original, but at a different location. So anytime you just slide a figure sideways or slide it up or down, that's a translation. What are the images, or the results, the new versions, of the vertices of ABC following this translation rule, where every point, x, y, becomes x minus 2, y plus 3, for the original vertices ABC here. So first off, graph triangle ABC. It should look kind of like that. Now, there's two different ways to figure out where the image, or the resulting shape, is after this translation. One way is graphically. So here's the rule. Anything that's added or subtracted in the x half of the point in the rule described moves things left and right above the x-axis. So x minus 2 takes everything and moves it negative 2 above the x-axis, so 2 left. y plus 3 moves everything up or down. A plus 3 would move everything 3 up. So if we take A and move it 2 left, 3 up, C, 2 left, 3 up, B, 2 left, 3 up, we have the new image points connected, and we have triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. So that's a graphical version. There's also the more algebraic version. We can take this rule that the new points are going to be at x minus 2, y plus 3, and literally just subtract 2 plus 3 to the coordinates of each point. Do you do that? 5 minus 2. 6 plus 3, we get 3 comma 9 for a prime. Yep, 3 comma 9. So it's just an alternate way to get the same answer, the same graph, algebraically or graphically. Pause here and try question 3 on your own. Question three, I just want to quickly point out they're counting by twos. So this might be a case where because the graph is counting by twos, it might be easier to start with the algebraic version, but it really works either way. They're moving the x values three to the left, the y values four up. Three left, four up. Three left, four up, three left, four up, or algebraically, and you should get these coordinates. But when they ask, what are the vertices? Negative 2, comma 6, 1, comma 5, and negative 1, comma 1. And don't forget, they also say to graph the image. Now, sometimes they'll ask you to work backwards. They'll give you a pre-image and an image, and they'll ask you what rule was used here. Like question 4, what is a rule that describes the translation or the slide that maps triangle ABC onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime? All right, so the one without the primes, that's original. So if we take one corner and we see what direction it slid to go to its new version, it slid two left, so that's negative two over the x-axis, and three up, that's plus three over the y-axis. There's two different ways to write your answer, and I want you to copy both down here so that you're familiar with both when you see it in the textbook. You could write it like this. Uh, coordinate x comma y becomes, arrow symbol, coordinate x minus 2 comma y plus 3. There's a shorter way that you'll see more and more often in the textbook, t, which is the abbreviation for translation, and then small subscript. Make sure it's tiny and, and lower. It's kind of like the opposite of a superscript, like power level. It's A subscript is tiny and lower, kind of like the subscript on x2 and x1 when we're talking about points. So tiny and lower in these symbols, negative 2, comma three. It's like a summarized version. Whatever's first is telling us that's after the x, whatever second is telling us that's what's after the y. Pause here and try question five on your own. So for question five, uh, check your answer. Make sure you wrote it in both forms so you get comfortable with both versions. So if you compare two points, say q and q prime, Q slid 6 units right and 2 down, so x plus 6 and y minus 2. Or T, which stands for translation, 6 comma negative 2. Last question. Carmen leaves her apartment and travels two blocks east 
and five blocks north to the library. Then she travels four blocks west and one block south to the grocery store. Where is Carmen in relation to her apartment? So first off, let's say her apartment is on the origin. Make a dot on the origin. That's where she lives. That's her starting point. So from there, she travels two blocks east. From there, five blocks north, here's the library. From the library, she travels four blocks west and one block south. Here's the grocery store. Where is Carmen in relation to her apartment? So if in relation to her apartment, if we're starting at the apartment to get to where she's at now, it'd be two units left and four units up. In other words, it's a translation to go from here to where she currently is of negative two comma four. And a way to write that in terms of how they're describing location and distance is that she's two blocks west and four blocks north of her apartment currently. Please write both versions of the answer here. Great job today, guys. Don't forget to turn in a picture of your notes on Schoology.